Wah. Every one. Now, I just thought I'd make a very, very quick video for you guys, because um, after I did um, the video that's done very, very well, over 7,000 views now, unbelievable, um, all about flat in the box and then mixes, and I was talking about gain staging. And a lot of people, kept, I've, I've had so many messages asking me about gain staging, and I didn't think I was going to need to make a video on gain staging, but I keep on getting lots and lots of messages. So I just thought, you know what, very, very quickly, I'd run through how I gain stage and what I use and how genuinely easy and simple it is. All right, so let's first start off with the basics, okay? So imagine you've got a multi-track, okay? You've recorded it or somebody else has recorded it. What you'll do is you'll then have your tracks, and before you put any plug-in or any analog gear into the chain, the first thing that I do is I use a VU meter, okay? Now, I use MV meter 2, which is absolutely free. It's free. I'll put a link down in the description. Now, the easiest way to do this is to find your biggest peak, okay? So if you go through the audio waveform, right, you'll see it, you'll see your biggest peak, right? So all you do is, I just pick a little section of it, and then from there what I do is I set the trigger tool to minus 18, I loop the audio, and then I press the trigger at the loudest part, and it then adjusts the gain to minus 18, or whatever you choose to set it at. Okay, now this is just a gain staging one for minus 18, which is 0 dB VU. And what you'll find from there is that your loudest part of the track it's hitting 0 dB view, and it's not going in to the red. Now from here, there's two ways that you can do it. You can leave MV meter 2 on and just go straight into your plugin. Or what you can do is you can load the first plugin, okay, and whatever um, MV meter 2 adjusted the gain, whether it put it up or down, so for example, if it was like minus 1.5 dB or something, you would go out to the input, right, of your first plugin, and you would take the input down by minus 1.5, right, because it's telling you what the input needs to be adjusted by for it to be minus 18 and for it to be gain staged correctly. And then from there, all you are doing is ensuring that your output matches the input. It's as simple as that, right? It doesn't have to be exact. I think people were getting confused where I was saying, like, it has to be minus 18 every single time. Use your ears, okay? Use your ears. Or if you want to be proper pedantic, um, you could put MV meter 2 on the end of every single plugin. That's over the top in my opinion. Minus 18 makes sense to a lot of people because it's 0 dBVU, okay? You're not going into the red of the plugin. Honestly, guys, use the VU meters. That's what they're for in the plugins. And normally, they'll have input and output. So when you're going into the plugin, stick the VU to input, and then you can see the input, right? And then you've done that. You know you've gain staged it correctly. And then when you're using the plugin and you're doing whatever tweaks with compressor, EQ, whatever, you've added any volume or you've taken away volume, you stick the VU meter to output, and then again, you're using the VU meter and you're just attenuating. So you're always using the inputs and outputs of your plugins, okay? That's what they're there for. And it's the exact same last week with the DBX 160A. Again, I was utilizing that output knob just to ensure that I was outputting what I was getting in. In an absolute nutshell, it's get the desired level, okay, that you want to go into, and then just ensure that your output stays at that. If your output, okay, stays the same as your input, then you're not going to have to touch your input, okay? You're only really ever going to have to touch your output. Just remember, again, if you're going to buses and stuff like that, normally, again, with everything kind of built up together, it might be hitting it a little bit hard. So again, use the VU meter. If it's not got a VU meter, use the digital meters. If it's not, if you don't like the digital meters, stick in an instance of like MV meter 2 or a VU meter plugin, and you can see exactly where the input's hitting, and you can just go, dunk, take it down. Genuinely, it is as simple as that. Links are in the description for the products that I mentioned as well. That is how I gain stage. That is how you can gain stage. There's other ways you can do it. There's loads of different options. No set rules. Doesn't have to be minus 18. Some people gain stage to minus 18. Some people gain stage to minus 20 or 22 just to give them a little bit more headroom. Some people like to hit the units harder because, again, they kind of feel like they get a little bit more saturation. There's no really set hard rules, but just don't abuse the input. Don't abuse the input because that's not how you would use the analog gear in analog emulations. And just remember, whatever you do in non-analog emulations will affect the analog emulation, okay? Further down the line if you're using it further down in the chain. It is all one signal. Just remember it, okay? Regardless if you've got loads of drums and bass and guitars and they're all going to separate buses, they all go to the same bus. They all go to the same master bus, okay? All those signals combine, 
to one bus, okay? It's all one signal. So just ensure you've got a nice level going into that signal all the way, and you should be fine, okay? So there you go. My name is Paul Third. That's how I gain stage. That's how you can gain stage if you would like. Hopefully it's been a good video for you. If you found it really informative, pop a like on the video, right? I'm not going to ask you to smash it, because <laughs> who smashes a like button? Oh, boo! <laughs> like, like, like! Just fucking hit the like button, eh? Uh, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next week, hopefully, on Mixing Wednesdays.